Well, I think the way that you understand spasticity in Brazil is the way it's understood around the world, and the problem with that worldwide understanding is that it's unclear. Um, I've been studying the issue of spasticity to understand its relevance in cerebral palsy for decades. I have been looking for the definition that makes sense or that explains it, and I've discovered that most of the clinicians in the world think that the definition that was provided by J.W. Lance in 1980 that spasticity is a velocity-dependent resistance to stretch, that it's muscle tone that causes, that's, that the stretch reflex causes the uh, velocity-dependent resistance to stretch, that when you pull on a muscle quickly, it reacts uh, by contracting, that somehow that is spasticity. And the problem with that is that that theory that that is spasticity has never been validated since 1980. But it's not understood, so that means that everybody went along with the theory because it was easier to go along with the theory than it was to actually pursue the issue any further. I've been pursuing it further. And I will tell you that I've found up to 27 authors who cannot put together the idea that when you pull on muscle and it reacts with a contraction, that that idea has anything to do with movement disorder, particularly in cerebral palsy, also in stroke. Uh, it's not substantiated, and I'm sorry that it's so accepted because it is an issue or a definition or a concept that actually is not supported by the sciences. And in the meantime, as a therapist, I have never considered spasticity, thought about it, tried to treat it, tried to reduce it. I've really tried to improve body alignment, improve the base of support, and I've seen enormous changes happen in my children that you might call spasticity reducing. 